Okay, so this final tutorial we're going to cover how to do the last deliverable on the assignment sheet for project 3, or the last drawing I should say, which is uh, axonometric spatial experience, ghosted mixed media depicting the spatial quality and experience created by the spaces within the volume. So those two words, or those two terms, spatial quality and experience, um, should be the kind of concepts we're drawing on from up here. Uh, with our precepts. So uh, I'm going to choose two to uh, kind of try and illustrate with the uh, example that we've done. So we're going to do panoramic and we're going to uh, do to see light enter from around a corner. And what we want to do is make an axonometric drawing to illustrate, you know, these two kinds of um, experiences or qualities. So panoramic and to see light enter from around the corner. So I'm going to go back to the Rhino file that I drew these uh, elevations in um, and kind of compose these axons with. And this time, fortunately, or hopefully, uh, from the last tutorial you saved, um, you know, the uh, version of the drawing you did with, that represents kind of solid uh, of the plaster cast. Um, so I'm going to uh, work from this drawing now. So I'm looking at, like, what does the solid look like? Um, and we're going to kind of try and draw this, um, uh, we're going to make you know, a similar kind of axonometric drawing and then add some kind of layers of annotation to illustrate these, these uh, qualities and experiences. So first thing I'm going to do is, uh, in Rhino, uh, set up a named view. You can get to the named view panel by typing in named view in the command line. In here I can uh, kind of define an angle if I look in Ghosted. We'll see if it's kind of an angle that's going to work for us. Uh, it can often be helpful, I think, to you know, like not have lines overlap from front to back like that. So just trying for trying to find an angle where the lines are going to stand apart clearly. Okay, let's look at that, and I'll save my view. Click on the little save icon in the named view panel, and then way we can go back and forth as we're producing these drawings. And then I'm going to produce the uh, line work for the axon in much the same way that I did for the last tutorial. So I'm going to change into my uh, multi-view here, show all my viewports. Okay, let's move all this stuff out of the way a little bit. So first thing I'll do, I guess I don't have a box for this one, so I'll just make a box really quick. And then with my box selected, I'll use the command silhouette. Uh, now I have the kind of outlines of that box as curves. If I group them, uh, now I can easily use those, uh, and I'll just delete the box again. So now I can easily take that group each time I produce a, a layer of my drawing, uh, and kind of use it as a reference for how to line things up later. Um, so the other thing I'm going to do is just uh, do an initial frame where I show kind of the frame of each section and the overall box. And I'll do a make 2D of that. Click OK. So that's just the kind of framework of the drawing. Uh, then I will show. I wonder if I can grab these all as groups. Uh, since they're actually not overlapping in this view, it's it's easier to just make 2D all at once. Look at that surface. Okay, go back to my angle there. All right, and then make 2D. There's all my frames. Uh, and. Uh, then, okay, so I'm also going to do the ones on the surfaces here. Oops. So I'll just grab my box as a reference for that, for these ones. Make 2D. I'm not sure we're going to use these yet, but I'll just keep them so that we have it if we want it.
last uh, drawing where I just do all the lines uh, with the option hidden lines turned on. Just for um, kind of composition of the line work. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these lines. First, I'm going to save my line file so I don't lose anything. I'm going to take all these lines. File, export selected. Uh, save it and under save as type, change to Adobe Illustrator. Give it some kind of descriptive name, hit save. Uh, I also forgot in the last tutorial, it does say that these two drawings should be one to one, so they should more or less kind of fill an 11 by 17 page. So I'm just going to uh, hit this option, preserve model scale, and hit one to one, click OK. All right, and then I should be able to go to that folder and open up that Illustrator file. All right, and then I'll zoom out a bit. So they're going to run off the page a little bit, maybe. Uh, but once we put them together, we'll get them to lay out. Uh, if you need to change the size of your uh, page, go to File, Document, Setup, Edit Artboards. And up here, we can go with 17 inches height, 11 inches. If you don't see the units you want, again, you would just go to File, Document, Setup. And under Units, change into inches. You can also check by toggling the ruler, hit Control R, and you'll see the ruler appear. Okay, so we start to lay our drawing here. First of all, I'm going to go I hit Control A. You can also go Select All. Sorry, I did that fast. Select All, and uh, change the stroke color to black so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I also could. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that yet. So I'll, I'll just take these lines um, and put them on their own layer for now. I'm probably going to keep this relatively light. So this is the kind of um, just the framework. I can also turn down the line weight just a bit here, just so it isn't too distracting. I'm also going to lock that layer so we don't end up messing it up as we go through and add these other layers. Uh, then I could make a copy of this. So I'm going to drag it holding Shift and Alt on my keyboard. That makes a copy. You can also hit Control C, Control V, and make a copy that way. Go to the Live Paint tool. Under the Shape Builder tool, you can also hit K on the keyboard. Up in the Color panel, I'm going to toggle to black as my fill. And then I'll just go in here and fill all the solid stuff. Then I go back to my selection tool. And under um, uh, my colors, I'll swap to my stroke and set that to none. So now I just have the outlines. Again, because we live filled them together, they should kind of remain a group. And I'm also going to set the opacity to 50%. Then holding control on the keyboard so I can grab one of the control points. I'll move it into position. I'm also going to make a new layer for these. Um, all right, so there's the first part of our drawing. Then I'll do the same for these two. So K on the keyboard, toggle to black as fill. Go back to selection tool and then. Uh, Set the stroke to nothing. K, black. Remove the stroke weight, stroke color. <clears throat> okay. And with these one of these, I'll also set the opacity to 50. Front. 
Um, because we have all these layers kind of opaque, or I'm sorry, translucent, uh, they're not going to really, um, it's not going to make a huge difference which one's in front of which, uh, but just in case. All right, so arrange. All right, just do there. Send to back. Okay. So there's the kind of rough uh, overall composition of our sections. Um, <clears throat> oh, actually, let me make sure I have all these on that same layer. Okay. So those are our fill. Excuse me. And then um, I can also set the, uh, I can use these lines now. Um, and I'll actually delete the outlines, except for maybe one, so I can line it up. Actually, I don't think I need that. So I can use these to kind of uh, uh, highlight the profile of each section. Make a new layer, I'll throw it on there. And I'm going to turn up the line a little bit on this guy. And we want to make sure that that layer is on top of everything. So we're kind of showing those outlines in a really clear way. I guess I forgot to do that for this, these three layers. We can just quickly make a copy, pull them apart, select all three, turn the opacity back up to 100, uh, go back to showing just the outlines. And because we live paint these, we, we actually need to expand them now. So select each one, go up to the top where it says expand, and then right click and ungroup it. And then we can delete the lines we don't want. Oops. Then I'll actually group it again so we can keep it clean. Click on group, delete all the lines you don't need. What is that? By the way, if you don't remember, the way that you would zoom in and out and move around is you hold space, left click on the keyboard, alt and scroll zooms in and out. Change that line weight, put it on the right layer, group it, and throw it into place. And last one, ungroup. Oops, I guess that bottom line is actually part of the section there. the kind of hidden line information we have from this drawing uh, just to kind of augment uh, our, our reading of the three-dimensionality of this. So let's see, go one by one. So I'm going to take those two, let's see which ones are, okay, hidden lines. I'm going to select my hidden lines. Just turn down the line rate a bit. Down the dash line. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what the what that layer is. I think I don't need that. I'll just go ahead and delete that layer. Yes. Ah, so that's the okay. So we have all those lines, which are the lines from our section and then the kind of frames for each section. So we don't need those, but we could add these ones, which are the kind of secondary lines from the section, or the like background lines from the sections. 
again, I would just select them, turn the line rate down a bit. And in this case, we can even actually make it a little bit grayscale. So I'm going to go to the color panel, click on the little three bar menu button at the top right, hit grayscale, and then turn it down a bit, maybe to like 80 or 60. Okay. Let's see if I can line this up properly. I'll grab one of these lines, maybe. Oops. There we go. So that just will kind of augment our view of the extra lines. Oh, and then I'll select my hidden lines as well. Try that again. There we go. All right. Ooh, I lost. Huh. Uh, it looks like I somehow lost the outline of that background fill. Metric drawing, and then we can use a couple of other, um, you know, kind of graphic uh, additions to uh, make the drawing re read a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the um, uh, existing layers, make a new layer, I'll throw it on top. Uh, just for now, we can figure out how to compose that layer. And if I'm looking at um, Again, I'm going to go back and look at my, I want to kind of try and find a way to graphically show this panoramic quality. So I'll do that first. Maybe what I'll do is draw a circle um, so I can begin to represent the kind of, you know, 360 degree or, or, or wide angle view. So if I start by drawing a circle, then I can right click, go to transform, and go to shear. I'll hit click preview. And start to kind of transform it in a way where it's lined up, I think, with my axon angle. Looks pretty good. Click OK. So let's say that I was going to try and show this. First of all, I want to make sure it's extending past uh, the um, kind of space within the models so that we're illustrating that we're looking kind of into a space beyond the um, uh, you know the space made by the cast. I'm also going to give it, so I'll go back to, I'm going to go to HSB, give it a color here. I'm going to just use red because it should stand out really clearly. I'm also going to drag that color down to my swatches panel so I can use it over and over again. And then I'm going to select this line and using the cut tool or hitting C on the keyboard, which is over here under the erasers tool, under the eraser tool. So. Using, I guess it's called scissors now. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, 
well, actually maybe what I should do first is draw a couple lines. So I'm going to grab my line segment tool and I'm going to drag from my center point here out to an edge so I can kind of show the wide angle of this view. Maybe I'll do like something like that. Make sure that's going all the way out. Okay. And I'm also going to make a couple copies of this because I want to show how that kind of view changes. Oops. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to turn everything else off. So I'm going to move it and hold Alt. And then remember to copy it again in exactly the same uh, kind of direction and spacing. I can go right click, transform, and hit transform again. That way that the third one will be like exactly lined up again with that direction and spacing as the first movement was. Actually, I look like I'm a little off there, so I'm going to try that again. Maybe it is better if I do it with the uh, drawing turned on. So move it once, holding Alt on the keyboard, right click, transform, and go transform again. There we go. That's a bit more clean. So now I'll turn the rest of those layers off. And what I'm going to do, well, actually, what I want to do here is kind of edit these lines so I'm starting to kind of see the change in my kind of panoramic. Uh, from one position to another. Okay, now I'll turn all the lines off. And I'll go circle by circle. And what I'm going to do is actually cut the circle. So I'll go to the cut tool or the scissors tool. And I'm going to click on my circle. So make sure I have it highlighted right where my line intersects and you'll see a new control point will be created I'm going to do the same at the other line and I'll go back to the selection tool and I should have that kind of segment of the arc separated I'll do the same with this guy cut cut delete the segment we're not looking at cut <clears throat> and put. Okay. So those are our three kind of maybe call them view cones or something like that. So I'm going to now select all of these and do kind of the same as I did before. So I'm going to make a copy, drag, holding shift and alt on the keyboard. And I'm actually going to fill them in with the uh, live paint tool, but I want to make sure that I do them one at a time. Uh, if you do them all at the same time, we won't get the benefit of seeing that kind of overlap between them. Let me turn them uh, less opaque. Oops. So K. All right, so I'm just selecting all three of those lines. Hit K, toggle to fill, and then fill them. Select all three, 50% opacity. And I could also toggle the Stroke weight so that it's turned off. There we go. Okay, and then what we gotta do is kind of get a little messy with our layout here. So what I need to do is uh, put a segment of this drawing, and let's say also this one, on top of uh, one of my view codes so that it's clear that I'm looking sort of like through the object here and uh, on top of the object over here. So what I can do is select both those paint groups, uh, this one which is in front, and this one, uh, and up at the top I'll hit expand, right click ungroup, uh, I didn't realize it would do that. 
we can just change it back to 50%, I believe. Everything's fine. Okay, and now I can select these individually. So I'll put these two on a separate layer and move them up in the layers panel. That way they show kind of on top of these view cones. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna turn this down a little bit more because it's kind of a little bit too dominant. There we go. where we talk about how the light enters. And again, I'm probably just going to use like a kind of, um, uh, okay, to see light enter from around the corner. So again, I'm just going to kind of use uh, like arrows and actually I'll probably just use arrows in this particular case. So if we talk about, you know, somebody's position relative to how light enters the space, and we could even try and kind of diagram the shadow if we wanted to. Um, I probably won't do that in this case, but I'll make a new layer and I'll try and kind of draw some of the pen tool up here, the one that looks like a little pen point. Oops, and let me lock everything else so I don't accidentally mess something else up. And I'll kind of try and show light enter. Oops. When you're done, just press enter. And it'll be done drawing the line. And then I'm going to try and copy that kind of vector, that light vector. for each section. So I'm looking at where the light would enter and where it would hit. Give or take. All right. 
And then, of course, we would not see light enter if it's coming in from that side. We wouldn't see any light enter over here. So I'm just looking at how light is entering on these three kind of vectors. Uh, then I could go as well. I'm going to make a copy of this line. So I can kind of line up these ends. I'm holding shift to keep that angle of that vector consistent. Make that line. All right, and then I'll probably whistle time kind of dash. some arrowheads. Uh, maybe a different one. So if I, if I had the arrowhead to the wrong one, I can also just click this little swap button to make it go to the other end. Um, okay. And then the other thing we can do is kind of try and show how you know the, the light is darker on one side or maybe kind of diagram a rough outline of where that light is actually hitting. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'll make a new layer. I'm going to use the pen tool with this one. So we're just going to kind of make it up. And show this kind of volume of light. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is actually make it white and then I'll get rid of that outline. So turn the stroke to zero. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of opacity. You can even give it a little bit of color as well. showing like these kind of spatial qualities within your drawing. Uh, but again, uh, I think it'll differ from project to project and of course it'll differ uh, for you depending on what you're trying to show and, and what your design is. Um, let's see if I just add one more layer here. I think I also want to make a bottom. So I can go to direct select and just line this up. Control point by control point. Because I don't want to try and trace it uh, with the pen tool. 
because I may end up messing up the existing control points. Okay, that's a little bit more clean there. Oh, excuse me. Um, and yeah, so you're open to uh, kind of investigating this however you wish. Um, and uh, you know, using any of the tools that we talked about in this particular uh, tutorial. Um, all right, that wraps this one up, and I think that will conclude our uh, um, drawing tutorials for Project Three.